Roll call. Gray. Here. Harding. Here. Melton. Here. Pauls. Here. Palermo. Here. Festerson. Here. Mr. President. Here. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and remain, uh, well, be the, the opening remarks will be given by uh, Council Member Rich Pauls, and he's requested that everyone sit for his remarks. I I wanted you to sit down because I just have a few things to say about the, the individuals who I've worked with the last few years. I'm going to start off, uh, I don't know, most of you do not know the people who are behind the scenes who make the majority of us up here look pretty good because they help us out. And I want to thank those individuals from the clerk's office and also from the city council's office. There's some amazing people behind the scenes and other people who work for the departments in the city. But I need to talk a little bit about the individuals sitting in front of me. And I'm going to approach this. And by the way, my giving this speech today was just by luck because I rotated this time. So God was on my side. <laughs> so... I just want to just say a couple about some of the people sitting up in front of me, and I'm going to by their first names. Amy, who worked with a, uh, a number of years, you might say, and I'm going to approach this. My background is, is in education, so I'm going to approach these individuals that, like they were students that I may have known in the past. <clears throat> we all know Amy is one of those individuals you just have to like because she's just that's that's part of her personality and if some of you would know some of the things she's done for those people who came in front of us in the past and could not afford certain things like uh you know they there's shoveling of the snow and they got fined for some reason i'm not going to say amy ever helped any of them but i know i did financially but i see amy as a person uh, who would be a teacher's pet because she just she just knows how <laughs> to do it you know you, you just like her and she would give that teacher that apple and she would just polish that apple up and she she just just knows how to do it like in other words um, when she votes against one of your uh, things that you're promoting she still makes you feel good she just has that in her so she's one of those type of individuals. Now I'm going to talk about the next two people beside me. That's Brinker and Pete. They have a lot in common that you may not know about. And I'm just going to see, this is how I would see them when they were students. They would be those kids, and remember, they'd be up to wave their hand because they had the question, <laughs> or the answer to the question. They'd wave their hand and almost fall out of their chair, both of them. Just think about it. And, and I always liked those kids because I didn't want that teacher to ask me to, uh, to try to answer that question. Well, that's how I see how they actually perceive this. There are times when they're asking questions to uh, people in front of us. I want to say, guys, you're really digging down deep. Uh, they just keep going at it. I mean, they just keep attacking till they find what they're looking for. And at times I'm sitting up here and I say, okay, guys. But then it dawns on me, they're trying to find that answer. And they do a very good job of that. It not only helps the people sitting up here, but it also helps the people watching us. So that's the type of individuals they are. They both go at it different ways, but that's, I see them as digging deep into uh, the issues. Now their apple that they would hand to the teacher would be applesauce because they've worked so hard on that they're trying to find the seeds so their apples would be applesauce now the person up here beside me ben but actually i was flipping channels last night and he was on tv 
And I was listening to what he had to say. I said, my goodness. I've been around him so long that I forgot that he's smarter than I really thought he was. I mean, <laughs> his, you know, he was just sitting up here. I thought he just wanted, you know, one of the guys. But the questions that was on SEV and the, uh, the history and the compliments that the other people were giving him, it's amazing. And I see him, this is, I, I would view him as uh, the classroom. That kid who's that underdog, he would be defending him. He would be trying to help that kid out. Because you, we know in every classroom there are some kids who are underdogs and there were some have, who are bullies. And that's how I see him. And his apple, <coughs> before he gave it to the teacher, he said, could I slice part of this for this individual who has nothing? That's how I see this person. Now I'm looking at Vinny. Now, as a school principal, he would have visited me often. <laughs> <laughs> and before he gave that apple to that teacher, he would take a bite out of it. <laughs> but here's one thing, and I hope people understand this. Because uh, <clears throat> those of us in the Vietnam era, you reflect on this. Because I can remember... Uh, although I was not involved in Vietnam, but I knew a number of people. And if you were in a foxhole, you would want to have somebody in there who would defend you. And that would be Vinny. Now we come to Chris. You know, every once in a while, in a classroom, a teacher has to leave the room because they're there for hours mostly to go to the bathroom, because I can remember that. Chris would be the student, the teacher, would leave to be in charge of the classroom. <laughs> and he would make sure if there were 12 apples up on that teacher's desk, that there would be 12 apples there <laughs> when she got back. And uh, I do think that the council will miss him because of his ability to run a meeting. And that's why I wouldn't mind having a drink with him to hear all of his stories, because he does know how to tell stories. And the last person that I like to talk about is the mayor. Now, I see the mayor as the keeper of the apples. Now, I don't know if you recognize this, but there's some apples that are delicious because they're called they're delicious because they're delicious. Then I'll pick on one. I don't even know if they have any more, but as a kid, it was called a Jonathan. Now that apple is a little bit tart. And every once in a while, the mayor not only sends us delicious apples, but she throws a tart one in there <laughs> to make sure that we stay away. And I have so much respect for her as the mayor that I have suggested in the past, I've teased her on this, but this has been a legitimate teasing, that she ought to be, ought to run for governor. I have that much more respect, too much respect for her. And that makes me lead back, because I left this out about Amy. I have so much respect for Amy that, as Karnak would say, a future judge <laughs> or maybe a future attorney general. That leads me to, uh, to say that I view women as being those who have been, have, haven't been appreciated as much politically. Because in the city of Omaha, oh, as of, uh, I think, the 19, uh, 2019 estimated uh, survey of the number of people in Douglas County, there are actually more women than men. So I'm, I actually want everybody here to be reelected because I know them. They're sincere about this. But I see Chris and I are not. So I think uh, that we ought to be promoting women, at least in our position, at least be running for it, for office. And I'm going to end up my little thing here by saying 
in my, I'm, of course, I'm an educator, and I've had a lot of philosophy classes, almost to the point of, I don't know if you, if anybody who has a degree in philosophy, you have to be crazy. I mean, because of all the different individuals out there. So I started re reviewing some of my uh, past people that I had to study in philosophy, so I ended up with this one, Dr. Seuss. And this is what my thing would be. Do not be sad that it is over. Be happy that it began. And I thank you for giving me this time to stand in front of you, taking more, oh my goodness, I, 10 minutes, slap me down. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Council Member Pauls, and a wise man he is because he all he made us all commit that we would not roast him today. So he did the reverse roast, having that commitment from us. And we should be careful because there's a building we know he doesn't like in Miller. We we may just have to name that after him. <laughs> Good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this meeting of the Omaha City Council. We thank you for joining us today as a courtesy to those in attendance and to facilitate the conduct of our business, we ask that you please turn off or silence all electronic devices. The first item on the agenda today is the election for the, um, to fill the vacancy created by Council Member Rich Paul's uh, resigning his position on January 5. The first thing we will need to do is suspend City Council Rule 5C to allow us to take votes by roll call. No. Roll call. Um, roll check. An affidavit of publication is on file for the pre-council and city council meeting and a current copy of the Open Meeting Act is posted in a white binder on the East Wall of the Legislative Chambers. Gray. Yes. Harding. Yes. Harding. Yes. Melton. Yes. Pauls. Yes. Palermo. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed seven to zero. Council members will note there there are ballot forms on uh, before them. We will proceed by round. The first uh, round we will vote, initial the ballot form. The clerk will then collect them and tally them. If if someone achieves four or more votes on that ballot, she will inform me. I will announce uh, the winner and she will then call the roll of how the ballots were cast by council member. If not, we will continue doing so until someone has four votes. So please remember to check or X the person you're voting for and initial at the top of the ballot and the clerk will collect the forms. Thank you. Can there be a motion to commence the voting in a second? <laughs> roll call? No roll call, you're voting by ballot. Okay. While they're counting them, I'll just let you know there's no white smoke or dark smoke that comes from this chamber. So those outside will have to wait till they see it on the news or read in the paper. The clerk has announced we have a majority. We have the five uh, votes in the majority for Colleen Brennan. The clerk will now announce the ballots for all candidates. Five for Colleen Brennan, one vote for Don Rowe, and one vote for Jeffrey Moore. Okay. The ballots are a matter of public record. The clerk will release them if the media has uh, requests. Uh, she can also 
read them now. It's up to the council on your wish. We can. Okay. Okay. Without objection, the clerk will read the ballots. Okay. Ben Gray is Colleen Brennan. Rich Paul is Colleen Brennan. Chris Jerem, Colleen Brennan. Vinny Palermo, Colleen Brennan. Pete Festerson, Colleen Brennan. Amy Melton, Don Rowe. Brinker Harding, Jeffrey Moore. Thank you. Um, congratulations, Council Member Elect Colleen Brennan. She will be sworn in on Tuesday, the 12th of January. I don't see her here. Madam Clerk. All right, items seven through 10 can be considered together for Blue Stem Meadows located northwest of 180th and Blondo Street. Planning Board and Planning Department recommend approval. Items seven and eight are ordinances to rezone this property from AG District to DR District and R4 District. Item nine, a resolution to approve the final plat for Blue Stem Meadows. Item 10, a resolution to approve the Blue Stem Meadows <coughs> subdivision agreement. The public hearing on items seven through 10 begin at this time. Are there any proponents? Yes, thank you, Mr. President, members of the council, Larry Jobin, 11440 West Center Road, appearing on behalf of the developer. With me today is uh, Cal Bull of ENA Consulting, the consulting engineers on this particular project. We're here for questions, if you have any. Thank you, are there any other proponents? Are there any opponents? The public hearing is closed. Roll call. Gray, yes. Harding. Melton, yes. Pauls, yes. Palermo, yes. Festerson, yes. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed seven to zero. Item 11, a resolution to approve a special use permit to allow auto sales in a CC district located at 7802 Military Avenue. Planning Board and Planning Department recommend approval. The public hearing on item 11 begins at this time. We have a proponent registered to speak on behalf of the project, Van Dozel, 3552 Farm Street. I see. In the queue. Thank you. Go Good ahead, afternoon. Thanks. I had to unmute. I was waiting for the direction. <laughs> um, uh, thank you. I'm just here to answer questions. We've met all the conditions and all um, actually having lived in this area for the last 40 or 45 years, I can tell you that this is, site's been sporadic in use and um, I think this is probably a, a good fit with a, a good client and uh, a good addition to, you, to the area. So I'm here are, to answer any questions. Thank you. You are Dan Dozel, 3552 Farm Street, right? That's correct, I'm sorry. Thank you. Are there any other proponents? Are there any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Council Member Festerson, you're recognized. Um, this isn't my district, and it's uh, as Mr. Dozel noted, it's at 7802 Military Ave. And so, right across the street is really one of the entry, entryways into the Keystone neighborhood. And then just down the street is Marion High School. And he's correct in his characterization of this particular corner that it has been auto, auto sales for quite some time, or formally, you might say, because it's been vacant for a period of time but does certainly lack a visual appeal uh, that would be great to have on that corner. So I appreciate what we're doing here with the special use permit. Dan, um, I know you're, you may not be able to show a visual, but could you just describe the improvements that will be made to that corner as a result of this proposal? And in particular, I'm interested in the landscaping. Sure, let me uh, quick pull up that plan. Generally, um, it's really cleaning up the site. There's three entrances right now, one off of 78th Street, two off of military. We're, we're eliminating the two exits on the military on that busy highway. So from a safety standpoint, a practicality standpoint, that's a big plus, I think, for everybody involved in using that area. Um, we're putting in a screen on the, um, a landscape shrub screen with trees along Military Avenue. We're adding, um, I think it's three, six, eight, eight trees along the west side uh, between the building and uh, the property line and the residence to the west. Um, we've added five trees along 78th Street. Um, we've eliminated uh, and pulled back some, um, some of the concrete pavement that's 
inside of that area, inside of that property, uh, in order to better meet the intended guidelines and setbacks for any kind of improvements in landscape buffers and that type of thing. Um, uh, he's already, I think, painted the building and, and done some exterior stuff that he felt safe in doing right now. So um, it's going to go a long, a long ways, Mr. Festerson, to kind of uh, reestablish maybe this this corner into something more appealing. Great. I appreciate that. And the only access thing you said is off 78th Street, no longer military? That, that's correct. And how about uh, pedestrian improvements right there? Uh, we are adding sidewalk along the highway. I'm sorry, I overlooked that. We're putting in um, a five-foot sidewalk along military that will terminate at his property line. Now, it doesn't connect anything to the west, but typically in these types of improvements, we add sidewalks in and that infills as, as um, building, app, build, building permit applications are, are registered with adjoining properties as they're slowly improved. Great. Thank you. I agree those will be uh, welcome improvements to that corner. And I would go ahead and motion approval. Roll call. Gray. Yes. Harding. Yes. Melton. Yes. Halls. Yes. Palermo. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed seven to zero. Item 12, an application to consider a Class C liquor license for Javi's Taco located at 17676 Welch Plaza, Unit 9. Public hearing on item 12 begins at this time. We have uh, Sean Kelly registered as the first proponent uh, on behalf of the applicant. Go ahead, Mr. Good afternoon, Mr. President, members of the council. Sean Kelly, 2804 South 87th Avenue, appearing on behalf of the applicant. Uh, this particular location is a restaurant. It's in operation now, uh, approximately 3,300 square feet. Uh, with that, I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Are there any other proponents wishing to be heard? Are there any opponents? The public hearing is closed. Roll call. Gray. Yes. Harding. Yes. Melton. Yes. Pauls. Yes. Palermo. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed seven to zero. Item 13, to consider a change of location application for Ray's Original Buffalo Wings Class I liquor license, currently located at 120 South 31st Avenue, Suite 5103, to be located at 200 South 31st Avenue, Suite 4103, and to change the trade name to Ray's A's Communication and Support. Public hearing on item 13 begins at this time. Are there any proponents? Uh, yes, I'm Ray Bullock. I'm the owner with my family. I'm just uh, here to answer any questions you may have. Just moving across the street. We're moving about 300 feet, literally, to the to the west over in what is now the remodeled Crave restaurant area. Great. Are there any other proponents? Are there any opponents? The public hearing is closed. Second, roll call. Gray, yes. Harding, yes. Melton, yes. Paul, yes. Palermo, yes. Festerson, yes. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed seven to zero. Consent agenda. Any member of the city council may cause any item placed on the consent agenda to be removed. Items removed from the consent agenda shall be taken up by the city council immediately following the consent agenda in the order in which they were removed unless otherwise provided by the city council rules of order. The public hearing on agenda items 14 through 18 were held on December 15, 2020. Council member Melton, you're recognized. Thank you. I didn't know if anyone was here. You know, over the years, I've gotten a lot of comments on the about the billing and collection services because the company is out of state, and a number of constituents have made comments. And I believe it's been my understanding that we actually do put this out for bid. It's very specialized, and we rarely get more than one. And I didn't know if there was anyone that could confirm that and maybe just provide a brief statement. Is, is there anyone here from the mayor's office? Finance. Finance here, Donna. Okay. Miller. Oh, there you are. Sorry, I can't see you with the behind the podium. Welcome, Ms. Waller. Donna Waller, City Finance, 1819 Farm Street. We had two bids, um, both of which were out of state. So. Okay. And, and, um, and, and that's what I just want to let people know, because I do get a number of people, they say, why? Why, when I'm mailing my, you know, my annual 
uh, fee is it going to? I, I think it was St. Louis previously. Right. Why now it, it actually. Why is it, and it says City of Omaha and then has a. Yeah, a, we do use um, a local lockbox now through First National. But when they talk to somebody, they're talking to someone out of state. And we're required by city charter to put things like this out for bid, correct? Right, yeah. And so and if we only get two bidders and they're both from out of state, we really don't have any control over that. And I, my understanding is that this kind of billing is very specialized. And yeah. at, at this point, we don't know of anyone locally that does it. Is that correct? Correct. And they work very well with like the 911 system as far as you know record keeping and that type of thing also. Okay. And, and just for your information, um, Douglas County is also um, hiring the same company. They passed an ordinance, or a, well, I'm not sure what they passed, but they passed, so they could also do a, an alarm billing now also. Okay, so they bid, they bid the same, mm -hmm. a similar, yeah. they had a similar bid out or and, yeah. and got the same response, basically a similar response? Correct. Okay. Because it is something I wish, I wish there was somebody locally, but it, Correct. it's my understanding that there's nobody local that actually practices in this. So Correct. maybe a niche area for a small business to think about if mm -hmm. they want to open one in the local area. Maybe the next time this goes out, we'll, yeah. we could get a local bid. So yeah. I just, I wanted to, to share Correct. that explanation. So I appreciate you being here and yep. being able to share that. Thank You're you. Welcome. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. Roll call. Gray. Yes. Harding. Yes. Melton. Yes. Paul. Yes. Palermo. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed seven to zero. The public hearings on agenda items 19 through 44 are today. If you wish to address the city council regarding these items, please come to the microphone, indicate the agenda item number you wish to address, identify yourself by your name, address, who you represent, if you are a proponent or opponent. The public hearing is closed. Oh, I'm sorry. Sarah Johnson registered on item 28. You're recognized, Ms. Johnson. Hi, thank you. Uh, trying the Zoom thing out for the first time. I appreciate it. Uh, my name is Sarah Johnson, 2316 North 52nd Street. Can you hear me okay? Absolutely perfectly. Awesome. Okay, probably too clear. Anyway, I'm speaking today in support of this resolution, uh, number 28, regarding curb cuts and ADA compliance, because I recently had an interesting experience with Public Works and their understanding, or lack thereof, with the Americans with Disabilities Act, or the ADA, and specifically curb cuts. The recent project that ignored ADA requirements is on Ames Street, between 60th and 66th. There are new sections of sidewalk, street panels, and concrete curbs all along both sides of Ames, but they have no curb cuts or ramps. Since that seemed contrary to what I know about ADA requirements, I called the mayor's hotline for more information. I was then instructed to call the Public Works Department, which I did, then told to call someone else. Uh, then they finally called me back, someone who knows more about ADA. It was a guy with maintenance and public works, um, and he told me since it was just part of a panel replacement contract, it didn't need to have curb cuts. But if I had more questions about that specific project, to call a gentleman, Todd Sparks, also in public works. Um, so of course I did, because uh, I have free time and tenacity. So anyway, Mr. Sparks was nice enough, but basically told me that the Ames Street situation was fine, and specifically said the contractor on that project, quote, didn't have enough time to build the curbs within ADA requirements. Um, that did not sit well with me. And so I called the state ADA coordinator who was very helpful. I explained the situation to her and she was actually appalled that I was told that it wasn't a big deal. In fact, she told me that it was illegal and the Department of Justice could get involved if it wasn't addressed, which could result in a really hefty fine to the city of Omaha. Um, she also helped me understand that actually the bare minimum in 2020, actually since the 80s, is to add ramps wherever they resurface or replace curbs. The only time it's not a requirement is if it's just like a pothole situation since this was actual curbs it should have been um properly installed with ada ramps uh, she also told me that she'd get in touch with our city's ada coordinator gerald coon who i didn't really know about and also that would have been uh, a cool opportunity for the mayor's hotline to direct me to him instead of public works anyway she got in touch with him and uh his name again gerald coon helped him educate the public works director about the situation bob stuby i'm just going to read a quick little quick from her email to me um gerald he spoke with the head of public works. He received the same sort of response you did. He informed him that it was inaccurate and asked me to provide some backing for those statements. It does sound like this sidewalk will be fixed appropriately in the spring. Thanks for reaching out. This was a great teachable moment for the head of public works and will change countless sidewalks moving forward. 
So I just want to make sure this is a teachable moment for all of us. And we understand that cutting corners is not, not good. Uh, just because there wasn't enough time to do it right seemed really uh, inappropriate to me. So um, just wanted to kind of make sure that the head of the department understands what's going on. And if he's the one that's overseeing all these projects, but he's ignoring decades old requirements, just kind of makes me wonder what else isn't being built properly. Um, so anyway, I guess I just really hope that with this project that you're, I know it's an amendment to about a $11 million project with curb cuts in various locations throughout the city. It was hard for me to figure out exactly where this was being um, addressed, but hopefully it's AIM Street and all over the city because that way it will be a, a lot more accessible and equitable place to live. Thank, Thank you. you. Public hearing is closed. Council member Festerson, you're recognized. On, on that item, um, I did receive that email also from Ms. Johnson, so I did some follow-up on that this morning, and we had a brief discussion with uh, Director Stubbe. If you might come down, Bob. I'll give you the opportunity to uh, address the ADA situation in general, but then if you would address um, AIM Street in particular, uh, 60th to 66th Street there, which is actually in Councilman Gray's district, but um, is a close border to mine. <laughs> Bob Stubbe, Public Works. So general comments on the ADA situation citywide, and then I think you also um, indicated this morning that uh, the AIM Street 60th to 66th will be addressed. Correct. So typically what happens with ADA is that it's two separate type of contractors, normally what we use. And so Ms. Johnson mentioned about resurfacing. So tr traditionally what we do on resurfacing, we'll go in and do the ADA ramps ahead of time uh, with a separate contractor, and then we'll come in and do the resurfacing. This particular contract that we used on Ames Avenue, we're just doing panel repair. So the ADA ramps will be done uh, subsequent to the actual work that was done on Ames. And what's the timeline for that? And that will be done next year. Okay. And can you give us reassurance that um, Public Works is in fact attuned and following ADA requirements throughout the city? Yes, in fact, a couple things. One is, is that uh, we did have a, before I came to the city, there was a judgment against the city. We went through and, and updated a lot of streets uh, that uh, were identified by the DOJ, and we were uh, essentially released of that particular claim a number of years back. Uh, the other thing that's happened in the past is that Federal Highway has dictated to the DOT that they need to come in and look at cities. They've done that for us, and they're satisfied with our program. Thank you. I, also, it's not directly related to this particular issue or this particular contract, but um, it was something we just discussed too um, in terms of the Vision Zero employee uh, that I think was just hired. Can you talk to the council about that a little bit and tell us when that person starts? That person will start on Monday of next week. Within your department? Within my department. That individual will reside in our uh, traffic engineering. And we'll be focused on what initially? Uh, I would probably have uh, Todd Fitzer come down and specifically talk to those particular things that he's going to focus in on initially. Okay. Okay. Todd Fitzer, Public Works, 1819 Farnham. Uh, that individual, his name is Jeff Subject. He starts Monday. I kind of teased with him a little bit told him he'll be the most introduced person in public works probably in the history of public works because he'll be working with the Vision Zero group. He'll be working with the Active Living Advisory Committee. Uh, he'll be working uh, very closely with our, our planners on our complete streets effort. Of course, be working within public works. Uh, really, the, the Vision Zero, if you're not familiar with the, the term, is trying to get our, our fatalities on our streets as low as possible. So hence the name, the vision is zero fatalities. Uh, we don't know if that's achievable. We hope it is, but that's the goal. So he'll be looking at specifically uh, safety problem areas, uh, whether it's pedestrians, bikes, vehicles, whatever, high crash locations, uh, kind of the red dots that show up on our maps for areas that could use safety improvements. We go monthly. Uh, we have two people from our traffic department that goes down to the state safety committee meetings every month. Mr. Subject will be part of that effort. Uh, specifically focusing on safety and what can we do. Uh, we, we've got uh, some neighborhoods that we're looking at safety funding for specific intersections where there's high accident locations. What can be done? If, if a signal is no longer warranted, could it be a roundabout? Can we use traffic calming efforts? 
different things like that. Mr. Subject will be involved in, in those types of efforts. So I'm really excited we're at this point. I think it's a much needed addition and I'm, I'm happy that uh, Monday's almost here and I'm looking forward to introducing him to this council. Thank you, yeah, and along those lines, I think maybe we'd request to bring him to our next public uh, works committee meeting. We will plan, yes, sir, we will. Great. And I imagine Ames Street might be a candidate for him to look at as long as we're talking about yep. that. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. And with that, I'll motion to approve items 19 through 44. Gray. Yes. Harding. Yes. Melton. Yes. Paul. Yes. Palermo. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed seven to zero. Item 45, an ordinance to amend ordinance number 42269, approving a service agreement with Edenia to lease a ruggedized live scan station for digital fingerprinting for a term of five years. The public hearing on item 45 begins at this time. Are there any proponents? Are there any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Item 46, an ordinance to amend section 23-177 of the Omaha Municipal Code by adding the employment classification entitled Street Maintenance Manager. Personnel Board recommends approval. The public hearing on item 46 begins at this time. Are there any proponents? Todd Fitzer, Public Works. This is a position, as you know, uh, we lost our street maintenance engineer last March. We attempted to fill that position. We advertised it. We did not get qualified candidates to come in. My department then worked with HR on a solution. Uh, if we can't get a, a registered PE in here to fill that CE board position, what can we do? What are some other municipalities doing? I've met with some members of council. I have uh, documents here that I've shared. If any of you need those or want those documents, please let me know. Otherwise. I'm here to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Are there any other proponents? Deb Sander, Human Resources Director for the City, 1819 Farnham, here to answer any questions you might have. Thank you. Are there any other proponents? Are there any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Council Vice President Palermo, you're recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. And just a, a couple quick questions, if I could, uh, Director, if you could come up for me. I'll get everybody up to speed on where we're at here. Um, he's probably going to want your name and address. Deb Sander, City HR Director. Thank you. Thank you. So um, a couple of these documents I have in front of me, obviously, are for the creation of the street maintenance manager. Uh, which is a very important position, right? That's why we created it. So would you know, could you tell me, have we as the city of Omaha ever not had a street maintenance engineer in this position? Uh, going back um, at least the last 10 years, we have had an engineer in this position. Um, before that, there was a gentleman who filled in for the position who was not an engineer. So that was, but that was beyond 10 years ago. Was that filled in until we hired an engineer or was that filled in for a prolonged period of employment? It was almost three years. Okay. And then the person retired. Okay, because I, I want to stress how important it is that is, if this job calls for an engineer, uh, then that's probably what we should have in the position. But I also understand that things change and we put out uh, new jobs based on what we need and if we can't get them, then maybe we go a different route. But let me ask you, this is a job that uh, is far from entry level. Um, I'll just say this job pays $116,000 a year. So when you post this job, what is the usual criteria for uh, pulling it down and giving up? Well, we did post the civil engineer for a position and we had the, pos the posting up for, I believe over a month and we're receiving applications from applicants. We received two qualified applicants, uh, and then one of which uh, took the design engineering position, and um, the other person wasn't a good fit for this position, for the, for the street maintenance position. Um, after having you know, tried to get someone with a PE, we revised a class, or created a class specification that took the engineering portion out and left in only the maintenance position for streets. So the engineering portion will be covered by I mean, I'm sure Mr. Fitzer. I have more information on that too. 
he could explain that to you, but this is particularly looking at um, just the street maintenance, and we modeled it after um, some of our comparable cities, Madison, Wisconsin, Oklahoma City, and St. Paul, Minnesota, that they have this type of thing where the engineering is done by some other position, and this position focuses on the street maintenance from the snow plowing to the pothole filling, those kinds of things. Did I answer your question? Yes, you did. Okay. So a follow-up, just so I'm perfectly clear, we posted a spot that pays $116,000. Well, I take that back. It was we more. We posted a spot that paid a lot more money, uh, and we only posted it for one month. We, I mean, is that normal? Do, do we Normally, we only post for two weeks, and we did uh, quite some advertising in the engineering trades, um, but that's what we got. It's two applicants. In one month, two applicants. Mm -hmm. and, yes, sir. And for a, a, a job of this quality and, and qualification we're looking for, we only give it one month? That's what we did in this particular case, yes, sir. Okay. So um, I, I will say that I looked up uh, during the meeting. I'm happy to uh, say that uh, last Friday we did post uh, for an AEO1 position, which I brought up uh, last week, and we'll get into why that's important. But uh, I understand we need to do what we have to to help attract quality candidates but I think for a job that if I remember right paid 130 140 that we would give it more than a month because if we're not then it seems like we're just trying to create something uh, and, and go a different route so uh, I, I do have some more questions for uh, public works but that's it for now thank you um, so, Mr. Fitzer, if you want to make your way up, I have a couple questions as well. Todd Fitzer, Public Works. So we know how important publics, Public Works is. I mean, obviously, I don't have to tell that to anybody. These are the basic city services that everybody, whether you live here or just come to Omaha to work, this is what you have, right? So I understand we couldn't find a, a qualified applicant within a month. So we changed the classification, uh, and we also lessened the pay. So now it's down to 116. So I assume this will help us find some qualified applicants. But what my colleagues have to keep in mind and remember is that um, as we're short, the workers who actually do the work, there is zero openings for a foreman one. And now we're creating a job to be in charge of uh, the employees that were right now, as of today, 33 people short. So we got zero openings for a foreman. We're creating a job to be in charge of a department that's 33 employees short. And as of last week, it wasn't even posted. If you're 33 employees short, it should never come down. Mr. Fitzer, tell me, um, since it wasn't posted last week, due to testing, how many people applied for that AEO one spot? If you would know. I, I, I don't know exactly, okay. that's an HR number. We had 15 people that took the test, the examination, and 15 people were certified on the list as of yesterday afternoon. Those referrals were already made to the streets department, streets division of the public works department. So it wasn't posted last week because we were testing. As soon as the testing was complete and the list was certified, we reposted the position, and then the referrals were made yesterday afternoon. And there were 15 people on the list, and they were all referred to Public Works. Okay, thank you, and, and please don't think that this is a reflection of your department that works very hard, but this is a continued issue. So thank you, Director. And, and the problem with this issue that I have is we didn't post the job long enough, whether we would have got a qualified uh, candidate or not, but then what we did is we went and created a position. And we're and even with if the 15 people pan out, which we know how that works, five won't show up the first day, the other five will figure out something else, that leaves us with five, we're still short. This position should never stop being posted. And if you're gonna stop posting it, then don't hire a boss for these employees. People are listening, people understand. These are the basic city services. And it hasn't changed. So I'm gonna bring it up every single meeting. 
until it's filled. And I do not want to hear excuses about, well, MED takes everybody. MEDs have been around for 100 years, okay? They haven't taken our employees for 100 years. There's a problem here, and we need to fix it. And, and, and fixing the problem doesn't come from creating jobs for $116,000 to represent the employees that aren't there. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Palermo. I have a question for Ms. Sanders. In terms of this position, um, assuming there's a vote and the vote passes, this becomes uh, approved. Is this a position that is advertised externally, open and competitive, or is it, uh, or could it be possibly be just posted internally and filled uh, within the department? That is an option, but the Public Works Department has requested that it be open competitive. Okay. Um, in terms of uh, Mr. Fitzer, would you come up? Uh, Fitzer Public Works. Has the department made any internal preferences or encouraged any anyone internally to say, "Hey, you need to apply for this. This is um, this is a position that we want you to apply for because if you do, you'll you know you will look favorably." Upon no. It. The reason I, I bring this up is, and I've mentioned this not just with your department, with other departments, and I've on the HR committee mentioned it to the HR directors. There's a perception by those who don't work for the city but might be interested in working for the city that somehow this is a, a process of getting employed here that's it's a who you know and it's, it's not an open process. So anything we can do for positions like these that are created or even those that are just vacant and we're refilling that we can have a transparent, open, competitive process to the public is something that we want to encourage so that we can dispel the perception and hopefully uh, change people's minds about how um, the employment opportunities for the city uh, are handled here. So I, I thank you for that uh, words of um, transparency there, Mr. Fister, and uh, thank you, Ms. Sanders. No further lights. Non-action items, items 47 through 60, do not require public hearing or city council consideration at this meeting, but will be placed on a future agenda for public hearing and or vote. The reason for non-action is noted after the item on the agenda, as well as the date the item is expected to appear on the agenda for consideration. <laughs> the City Council will not meet on December 29, 2020 and January 5, 2021. We'll resume January 12, 2021. Roll call. Gray. Yes. Harding. Yes. Melton. Yes. Paul. Yes. Palermo. Festerson. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed 7 to 0. Meeting is adjourned at 247.